Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy, and welcome to my Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. A game that I think is an interesting talking point, and that I do overall like several things about. But make no mistake, I do also acknowledge that it can have some pretty low lows. I wanted to play this here because I think these are points that can be discussed a lot, but not all that many people do anymore. I knew a lot of people who had this as their first Zelda game due to it being the series debut on the DS, and even if I wasn't one of them, this is still something that I played a lot with friends around the time when it was new. For those who are uninitiated, this is a direct sequel to a fan favorite Zelda game, The Wind Waker. There are a few spoilers for that game ahead, it will not be spoiling everything about it, but it will tell you everything that you need to know about that story in the opening, so don't worry about needing to play something else before having played this. Though of course, I highly recommend Wind Waker if you have not. In doing this, I'm hoping to not only continue the story for those who haven't seen it, but also share some stories and obscure information about one of the Zelda series' most... obscure entries, <laughs> very redundant, and show why I think when this game has its high points, they are very high highs. There's not anything else quite like it, and that's what I want to show. So let's get started. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Our story begins not long ago. There was a young girl. Savvy to the seas, and head of a band of pirates. Her name was Tetra. She was pretty, brash, and brave. Tetra and her handsome pirates set out to explore the vast and unfamiliar seas. One day, on a stop at an island, Tetra met a young boy dressed in green. After a series of strange events, the two began traveling together. They found old ruins, and light enveloped Tetra. At once, she transformed into a beautiful princess. Her lineage traced back to an ancient ruined kingdom. She was Princess Zelda of the Kingdom of Hyrule. Just then, a huge, ominous king appeared. He carried Princess Zelda away. The evil king sought the sacred power passed down to Hyrulean princesses. He schemed to take the power and use it himself. The boy chased after him, determined to save the princess. The boy crossed seas and climbed mountains. The journey was perilous. He slayed evil monsters and used their power to become a true hero. After long and hard adventuring, he defeated the evil king. and beautiful Princess Zelda was rescued at last. Later, the two set out with the brave pirate crew in search of new lands. Yes, they set sail together. A happy pirate ending. Oh, what did you think of my amazing paper cutouts? Did you guess that Tetra was really Princess Zelda? Hey Link, are you sleeping, Swabby? I was there. Link! Link! Stop messing around down there. 
You're both supposed to be on lookout. Ha, <sighs> some legendary hero you are. Who'd have believed you saved me from the evil king? Princess Zelda, we're nearly at that spot in the sea. I told you not to call me Zelda. Tetra worked just fine before, you know? But enough about that. So, this is where the ghost ship is said to appear. Stay on the lookout for a creepy looking ship. Are you sure this is a good idea? What about all those ships that have gone missing? I say the ghost ship is behind all of it! That's right, Nico. Every ship disappears. And it's all because of that scary ghost ship. Ghosts? Hey, Tetra! They say these seas are protected, yeah? Something about a spirit called the Ocean King. Wouldn't a spirit like that protect the ships? Unless there really is an evil ghost ship. Don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing as a ghost ship. I bet it's just some pirates up to no good. I'll expose them as a bunch of frauds and remind them that there are rules to being pirates. I doubt there really is an Ocean King anyway. Oh man, bad stuff always seems to happen right after I wake up. Hey, look, the air feels chilly, eerie even. I say we take a detour around this creepy place. Quit being so scared. We're here to see the world, not take detours. Ship ahoy! Tetra, I can see a ship. Yeah, ship, up ahead. really are cursed and you call yourself a pirate it's just a ship but it does look like it could be the ghost ship there might even be a load of treasure on board that's it I'm gonna get to the bottom of this If there ever was a worse sound effect to have as an alarm clock, we found it. Oh, phew, you're awake. You weren't moving, so I thought you were done for. But it looks like you're going to be okay. I'm Ciella. You see, I'm a fairy. Good wordplay. I was out fluttering around and found you here. What happened? What? A ghost ship? Your friend was taken away by a ghost ship? So you were following after her, 
And you got separated from your own ship, huh? Is it the ghost ship people have been talking about? They say that those it takes are never seen again. You want to know more about the ghost ship? Grandpa will know all about it. I lost my memory a long time ago. When I woke up on this beach, Grandpa rescued me. He's very sweet, so you've got nothing to worry about. Our house is up there, off the beach. Come on! Oh, can you walk? Can you walk? Can you walk? These tutorial fairies somehow keep finding ways to get more condescending with every additional appearance. I don't know how they're going to outdo that one, though. Maybe it'll never happen. Well, you and me, we're going to get along great. We have so much in common already. We both woke up on this beach, and these very convenient tides washed away your memories, and they washed away all my heart containers and tools without even removing my clothes. Funny how that works. Anyway, so we dragged the stylus to move around. That's not going to be controversial at all. Ho oh, there, friend. Try tapping on me. Yep, that's how it's done. Just tap on people to speak with them. Try tapping on other things like signs and barrels. And chickens. Those two. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, was able to pick them up. No problem. Usually they run away from you, so I'm kind of happy that went off without a hitch. What's in here? I don't remember, so I think I'm going to... Oh, there is somebody in here. Hello. I've heard that the ghost ship is on the prowl again, stealing more islanders. So very dangerous. Well, that's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, not exactly the first thing that you want to hear before you talk to the guy who's going to tell you all about it. Doesn't bode well for what we're going to be hearing. Here we are. Ah, uh, hello, traveler. So your name is Link. I am Oceus, and I live on this island. Ciela told me all about what happened to you. Uh, when? I also hear your friend was taken by the ghost ship. I understand that you want to find the ghost ship, but you must not. But Grandpa, what are you saying? Link's friend was carried away. Pure evil fills the sails of the ghost ship. It roams the seas in search of victims to capture and no one has ever escaped from it. It's best if you stay far away from that ghost ship. No. To seek out that ship is to seek out your doom. That's why we have to do something, Grandpa! Oh, mercy. Hmm. You're not going to give up, are you? Why did it, why'd you not yes? <laughs> oh. Young people. I know, I'm thinking the same thing, Oceus. <laughs> there is a port to the east of here. A sailor by the name of Linebeck should be there. He'll be willing to tell you more about the ghost ship. Look at your map. The harbor is here. You mean that guy who came to visit Grandpa? He asked about the ghost ship. I remember him. I'll go with Link and show him who he is. It's okay, right, Grandpa? Yes. I don't see why you can't go along. I'm sure you can help Link. Thank you, Grandpa! Let's go, Link! She's always been antsy, that one. Now, Link. Lately, there have been many monster sightings. I gave in to you and told you about Linebeck, but you be careful out there. I don't mean to be that guy, but Linebeck came here to ask about the ghost ship, presumably meaning that he got all of his information about the ghost ship from this guy, and yet he sent- Okay, I guess to be fair, maybe Oceus didn't really have much information to share and Linebeck was already searching for it. I don't know. What I do know is, Pottery is the mortal enemy of hero kind. I must not allow you to have any of it within your abode. You might trip and fall and break your neck on the sharp shards of ceramics. I was saving his life, okay? No ulterior motive here. Least of all, stealing all his money. What's that rumbling? Another earthquake! So many quakes lately. So many monsters. Bad signs for sure. And I bet there are even worse things to come. 
Oh, you're right. Here's one of the bad signs now. Boo, I know. <laughs> to the port. Oh, heavens. That quake just broke the bridge again. So many quakes lately. And the bridge breaks every time there's a big one. There's a second way to get to town, fortunately. Unfortunately, it leads through a frightening cave full of monsters. What to do? Well, um, wait for the bridge to be fixed, of course. Well, um, I'm gonna be a dirty boy, and yeah, now that I'm thinking more about it, there really wasn't another problem with that cutscene. It's... Osha's didn't have anything to tell us, though, so I doubt he's holding out on us. I bet Lineback really is the bigger expert. Monsters! Look out, Link! It's way too dangerous! You need something to defend yourself with! We have to go back! No, we don't. I am an expert in dealing with this sort of thing. Monsters are not the problem. Now, trees! Those are the problem! <laughs> Cell wall is legit. Doesn't matter what you've been eating for breakfast, you are not going to be able to rip through that with your bare hands. Monsters, on the other hand, I can run around no problem. See, I'm teaching you how this whole adventuring business works. What say you, old man? Are you going to make another exception for me? Tried the path to the north, did you? Ciela, don't pretend you forgot I told you never to go that way. We've seen so many quakes rattle the island lately, Link. And monsters have been seen closer and closer to town. Be cautious, young ones. That cave up north leads to the port, it's true. But that path will be crawling with monsters. Do not even think of it. I'm sure someone will get around to repairing the bridge. Well, Grandpa wants us to stay out of trouble, but we need to find your friend. If only you found a sword, then you could show those monsters. You mean trees. <laughs> well, only one entrance we have yet to go into. I think that'd be a pretty good place to start. Grandpa uses this cave as a storehouse. I think I remember Grandpa storing a sword back there. Now, how to get this door open? Uh, I remember he cracks it open by... Uh, I remember he cracks open the door by writing a number on that sign. I think he says it's the number of palm trees on the beach. Sneaky. Well, if that's the solution to the puzzle, there's only one thing to do. Brute force it! Uh, wow, this is... Uh... Okay, I was starting to think that I wrote the, I wrote the number incorrectly and it didn't recognize it, because... Wow, that was a lot more than I was expecting. I was thinking that was going to be a tiny little number, like, you know, three. Now, what's this book say? Using the sword, basics number one. Use the stylus to swing your sword. Tapping and drawing lines quickly is the key to deaf sword play. You got a sword! You got Osha's sword! Tap on an enemy or slide the stylus on the touchscreen. You found a sword! Uh, you're kind of a little bit too late to be in tune with the music there. Sorry, Ciela. Ooh, we shouldn't tell Grandpa we're taking it. He'd worry himself sick. Good for us, though. Now we can defend ourselves from those monsters. You two are proving to be quite a handful. <laughs> Isn't that my sword? What were you planning on doing with that? Grandpa, I'm sorry, but we just had to. He can't abandon his kidnapped friend. We can't wait for the bridge. Yes, I understand, but I can't just let you go. Not without showing you how to handle that sword. I'll teach you how to handle it. Meet me at my house, Link. Link, so you have a sword, then know that even the best swords can be bad. If mishandled, that is. So I must teach you the basics of sword play. Let's begin with the targeted attack. I'm going to bring out some targets for sword practice. Far safer than real foes. Just tap a target to lock on and close in for the attack. Right now. Ah, Osius knows what's up. These are good targets to practice against. This is good sword practice for dealing with trees. Excellent! The targeted attack is the most basic of attacks. Use it well. Now for the side slash. When you find it hard to lock onto enemies, use the side slash instead. Just sketch a line that divides you and your target to slash at it. This move requires a little practice. Simply sketch to slash. Alright, walk up! And there's a horizontal slice! Oh, <laughs> Do I look like a target? I didn't know he did that! That's really good! 
It looks like you were fully. It looks like you fully understand the side slash. You can also use this. Use it to slash several things at once. Remember it well. And finally, we have the spin attack. Slide the stylus in a circle around yourself to spin attack, Link. Now, if you try leaving in the middle of the tutorial to skip it, we're not done yet. Where are you going? Uh. Man, if that's how he reacted to that, imagine what he'd say about today's youth if he knew how I cracked his safe code. <laughs> All right. Yep, spin attacks. There we go. Superb. I can teach you nothing more. Now, you must swim on your own as you venture among the monsters. But if you do have any problems, return here and speak with me. What happens if I speak to you again now? You're actually a pretty kindly man. Good. Now, don't go overboard, other. You just told me to swim on my own. That's a contradiction. <laughs> All right, well, we are all good to go. We got a sword, we know how to get this thing started. Are we stopping here? Heck no, we're gonna swim. Or not. Uh, I guess the tides washed away all knowledge that we had of how to swim as well between adventures. Yeah, I don't know how to explain that one with anything that makes sense, but so be it. Going out to the north, we have our first enemies, choo-choos. These are the weakest of all enemies. They go down in one sword slash of any kind. No trouble there. And this? is a gossip stone. Generally, they have hints. Boing, boing. Want to do a somersault? Scribble tiny circles at the very edges of your screen. I've done a poor job resisting this and kind of been spoiling it a little bit. Roll in the big tree and see what shakes loose. Roll too much, however, and you'll get dizzy. Look out for big trees. Typically, you get good items from that. There we got 20 rupees. That's the red one. And finally, we can slay the greatest of all foes that have been standing in our way. In we go, this is the mountain passage. It's somewhat of a mini dungeon, not really like a true first dungeon, but it'll get us into exactly how things are gonna be going here. Now, we have lots and lots of, well, we do have lots and lots of tutorials, cutscenes, I suppose. I guess that much is true, what it was just showing to us. But we have lots of gestures that we can do on the touch screen. We move with the touch screen, we swing our sword with the touch screen, we check items and open chests with the touch screen. And yes, we tap on any locked door to open it with the touch screen. This was kind of a controversial thing, because unconventional control schemes hadn't really been seen in Zelda games before at the time. And I understand it. I do understand why people might instinctively want to use buttons, but I do think that the game is designed around it so that if you get used to it, it's fine. Um, it does technically allow for analog control on a system that didn't have that built into its regular button scheme, and I do think it allows for greater control. Plus, I won't lie, I love me some Zelda that lets you instantly whip out spin attacks like they're nothing. It's great. Um, any game that lets me do that instantly earns bonus points for its control scheme with me. When pulling the levers, first second from the left. Pulling four levers. Where might those be, I wonder? Well, I bet this hint will come in handy. How about we write it on our map? This right here is what I consider the main mechanic of Phantom Hourglass. So I'm gonna draw four lines here. And it said uh, first was second from the left. Yeah, okay. So we are able to make our own maps and these will save. It does not uh, erase when you leave the room. You are able to save every one of these every time that you come into a new, every time you come into the area. Pull all four levels in the correct order or else, okay. Did I just say levels, uh, levers? Uh, reverse localization right there. Yeah, for those of you that played Zelda 1 or just any old game where you used to have to make your own maps, the entire game is designed around this concept and I think it's really neat allowing for the player to just kind of take notes as they go along. Some areas don't even have maps and you have to draw your own from scratch. I love this mechanic. I think it is one of the most clever things that they've done in a while and in fact, the information even stays up while you're drawing on the map, so I didn't, have to, um, wait, crap, that was, <laughs> wow, uh, I really should have brought that up sooner, because this is one, this is two, and then last is the second one from the right, so that means, logically, by process of elimination, that one is going to be third. Now, let us see if my note-taking has gotten any better since high school. I haven't been exactly honing the craft, so, um, it's kind of up in the air for me. One, a two, A three, and a four. Another good use of the touch screen. I think that this game's control scheme has actually gotten better with age, because at the time we didn't really 
you know, this was kind of in an era before smartphones, and it's surprisingly consistent with the interfaces that we have in smartphone games today. And I think that it just feels second nature to anyone playing it now, because it was very good at predicting how touchscreens were going to be used in interfaces in the future. There are a few things that are archaic, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but I do think it's pretty good. Uh, right here, uh, I said spin attack, thank you. As soon as I'm praising the touchscreen, I have it not go off there the very first time. Unfortunately, that's going to be happening a little bit. Like I said, it is not totally perfect. Uh, you can pick up items with your sword, which is something I like doing, even though I'm willing to bet that it takes more time to do that than it would to do otherwise. We have this rat moving around. Uh, come on, thank you. It's got a key on it, and I think if we're gonna be doing this, let's cover up this hole right here. Okay, pops out there on the map. You can see him on the map there popping out. Okay, now he's gonna run over here, he's gonna see the block and then run away- Oh no, 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 no! Crud. Okay. This is the first thing that gives me trouble. I feel like no matter how many times I do this, I do inevitably run into at least some problem- <laughs> Crud, he saw me. Come on. While I am being hopelessly outsmarted by a mere rat, which is not a good sign of things to come for this journey, um, I need to tell you, if there is a tip for getting the hang of this game's controls, it is that this game hates screen protectors. With every being, everything being so gesture-based, having your control inputs being broken up just a little bit is a death knell for having a good time playing this. Um, if you played with a screen protector the first time and you thought the control sucked, I wouldn't blame you at all. I tried playing this with one of those fancy tempered glass screen protectors just a couple of years ago, and it was impossible. I ended up just having to throw it in the garbage because it made playing this game worthless. If you're gonna use a screen protector, use a thin one. That's the way to go. Oh my god, I am an idiot. I remembered what it is you're supposed to do. Go over here. He pops out of there, and then he pops out of here. He turns around when he hits the block, and kapow! Thank you! <laughs> Uh, it just kind of came to me after a second. This is just, okay, it's really funny though because if there's one puzzle that I remember in this game that I just, doesn't matter how many times I play it. I think I've played through this about three times throughout my life and I remember that this gives me trouble every time. And yet no matter how much I make a mental note of it, it never seems to click. Uh, over here, uh, sorry buddy, but rocks are quite effective on bug flying. I guess to be fair, you wouldn't be a bug if you're a bat. Um, yeah, these are keys. They are yet another designated one hit punk that goes down without much of a hitch. Uh, let's go ahead and break that. Get some more rupees. Unfortunately, at 68, can you fulfill my wish and make it come true? I guess I got my rocks off. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't stay at 69. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. We made it to the port. It's much farther to walk when the bridge is out. Now that we're here, let's look up Lionbeck. I met him once or twice. Can't say I care for him. He's an awfully big talker for such a big cuckoo. Okay, let's head to the port. Now that we've made it to this first village, I think we're gonna end things off there. We got through a mini dungeon. We got a feel for what's going on. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. We go after Lionback, and something tells me he's going to be a pretty memorable part of what we're doing. See you guys then.